So, we just received some new spell changes recently, and honestly, I find them very interesting, so let's talk about it. How's it going everyone and welcome back to yet another video. I am the Frenzy Gamer and today we are going to be talking about something that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time now and it's about the spell changes that have happened as of recent. Now for a little bit of context I actually did make a document on this giving my full thoughts on every single spell change. So if you want to take a look at that definitely take a look. Um, it's going to go over every single thing up to like plus 40 spells so I will warn you it is a fairly long document because we're going a little bit more in depth we're talking more in case of the old versus the new the comparison between the two and also giving my thoughts to 40 plus spells because yes there are that many changes within this summer test run update essentially what we are going to be going over today is winners and losers we're going over some spell ideas in a way more like suggestions we're also going to be going over some of the shadow spells in my opinions towards it because there is a really significant change to shadow and finally give my final thoughts on all these changes but again if you really want to get my full thoughts check out that document it will be in the description so you can see everything so we are actually at the deaf school because the winner of the spell changes is actually belonging to death now i will also add myth to this category as well because they didn't necessarily receive too many significant nerfs and also witch's house call gets buffed myth still keeps the utility in fact some of the, the utility changed a little bit for the better so definitely myth would have been up there but because of one major thing death has actually become the major winner of the spell changes now let's talk about a little bit of the good first of all death drains now accept full enchants instead of doing half for those who don't know before then when you enchant a drain spell it usually just enchants half of the enchant and the other generally goes towards the drain which never really made sense to me but now it accepts full enchants so let's take a look a little bit at a comparison. I'll show you guys a little bit on the comparison screen so you guys can actually see it a little bit better. As you can see, when we're comparing one of the most popular spells for death, which is the Scion of Death, originally it did 975 drain. Now it does 850 drain, which is essentially like a minus 125 damage difference. Now, if I was to add an enchant, because now it accepts full drains. An enchanted scion originally will do 1175. An enchanted scion now will do 1150, which makes it a minus 25 difference. Essentially, in short, these changes for death, because most of the changes that were made for death were essentially more on the drain side, were almost non existent, which is actually really good. And not only that, we're talking about spells that have not been changed. So we're talking about Vampire, Ghoul, Wraith, even Scarecrow itself is going to be doing loads of more damage thanks to these changes. That also leads us to the second change, which is one of my favorite changes, is that Scarecrow also got a massive buff. Now, before then, does 400 damage, now it does 590 damage, giving it a plus 190 damage increase, making it probably makes death the best pve school overall it's probably been the best one but you can also make an argument that fire was also one of the better ones but this officially does make death probably the most funniest and also the best pve school and not to mention they're also in the rise in pvp so this change is definitely very good for the death school so props to death now let's talk a little bit about the bad now, the only bad thing I could have thought of is about the Wing Sorrow change. Not only did they nerf the damage, but they also nerfed the weakness. Before then, it was a minus 30 weakness to all enemies. Now it's a minus 20. Personally, the way I saw it is if you're just going to be nerfing the damage, that's fine. Keep the weakness the same, but they decided to do both. I'm not a fan of it, but it's definitely not that bad. A minus 20 weakness is still somewhat usable for the spell. You're probably more than likely going to be using this for utility, even though it's not as great as it used to be. 
All right, now that we talked about the winners, let's talk a little bit about the losers of these changes. I have two that I have in mind, and I'm going to let you guys decide who's the biggest loser in this, because somewhat, both of these schools got something that was a little interesting and could be very beneficial to both of them. And in fact, they have received stuff that was beneficial to both of them, but they also receive a pretty quite a bit of nerfs that is very unfortunate for both schools. So let's first start off with the balance school the good thing for the balance school is that nest of fury now becomes a very fun kind of roulette type of aoe spell and it's also more powerful before then it used to do 818 to 866 damage to ice uh fire or storm now it does the weakest end being 805 ice damage and the strongest end being 1050 storm damage. So this basically has become a spectral blast, but like an AOE, which is actually very good for balance because now they have a way better AOE that is going to make it a lot easier for them to quest overall. So props to the balance school for this one. Now, the other very big change is the change to both Hydra and Chimera. Now Hydra before then, uh, it's a 6 pip spell for those who don't know that generally wasn't widely used because it just, just doesn't really do enough damage and also because people tend to set for all those three elemental schools but now it has a change to where before then it was 190 damage now it's 230 damage to fire ice and storm which is essentially like a plus 120 damage in total of a change which is very good and for chimera Chimera is probably a little bit more of the popular spell used for balance. Before then, it was 340 damage to Myth, Life, and Death. Now it's 345 damage to Myth, Life, and Death. So essentially giving it a 15 damage increase overall, which is also very solid. Um, for those who don't know, there's also a YouTuber named Rotozap who is actually making some videos on his balance strategy that he actually has been coming up with uh utilizing you know chimera utilizing the new spectral sp was it spiritual or spectral tribune something like that and also probably even utilizing the scion in case all else fails which is not only a very interesting strat but it definitely could prove to be very effective so you know this is going to open some opportunities for balance to do things beyond of just using gaze but enough of the good things let's talk about the bad raw actually unfortunately received a nerf before then it does up to 640 damage now it does up to 610 damage making it a minus 30 damage decrease which is very unfortunate because i didn't really see a problem with the spell damage wise in fact i probably think it could have used a buff in my opinion but it is what it is gaze of fate also does less damage than abominable weaver or hungry before then gaze used to do 550 balance damage and then a 550 random school damage with a plus 25% damage bubble. Now the new gaze does 325 damage and 345 damage to a random school plus the 25% damage bubble. So at least the utility is the same, but the difference between that is around negative 430 damage, which is a lot. If we're comparing gaze to those two spells, it's a 120 less damage when it's comparing it towards the low end, and a 240 damage difference. By the way, both of these are negative. It's a difference when comparing to the high end, which is definitely very brutal of a nerf for balance overall, in my opinion. And let's talk about the ugly. Yes, this uh, definitely has an ugly category for sure. King Artorius has a nerf not only to the damage but also the weakness. So, personally, I had no problem with the nerf to the damage because, for the most part, every other King Artorius had a little bit of a nerf to damage. But my main problem is essentially the nerf to the weakness. So, if you guys are just curious about the damage, um, the spears stay, stay the same throughout. But in terms of damage, it's like a minus 60 damage difference because we're comparing from 725 damage from the old one to 665 damage from the new one. But the weakness is, was also decreased by minus by like 15 percent. It's crazy. So the weakness before then was like a minus 40 percent. Now the weakness is a minus 25 percent. 
And the problem I have with this essentially is that this spell was considered to be probably one of the most underrated spells in balanced PvP, generally because the weakness definitely does save lives, fairly often too. And not only that, but the spear that the spell comes with also allows you to combo with some other hits. Like for example, many people tend to do this towards a gaze and it does a pretty good considerable amount of damage thanks to the pierce. And there's a lot of good things that come from King Artorias for balance, but unfortunately with this change, you're better off using two lures for the utility and arguably probably the damage over using a King Artorias spell. And that's pretty sad. And the other ugly thing is about Sabretooth. Sabretooth also received a damage and utility nerf. The utility nerf being that it doesn't have one. It's because before then, it does up to 1100 damage and also gives a spirit shield. But now it does up to 1005 damage and that's it. Now, the devs have talked about giving Sabretooth more utility, which is actually a good thing in my opinion. I'm a big fan of utility. So what they're considering is that they're giving Sabretooth essentially the spirit shield and elemental shield at the same time. This means that it will probably get a little bit more of a damage nerf, but in my opinion, I think it's great because I just love utility. I think utility is very important. And if you're getting a utility that protects you from ongoing attacks, that's a very good plus because let's be honest, not many people tend to play defensive when they do PVE and sometimes that does screw them over. So guys, we are at the school of life because this is, in my personal opinion, probably the second loser. I think it's very close towards balance, but I feel like balance has a, just a slight bit worse, mainly just because of the before then, I think around the spring update where mana burn was changed to just remove three pips. So it essentially removes a power pip and a new pip, which unfortunately that made balance lose a little bit of their identity of what they were known for which is to be a match pacer and that's also like a very heavy thing for them overall now for life there are a few things that were kind of bad for them but let's talk about the good the good thing is, is that forest lord now becomes the new seven pip spell and it also does a lot more damage before then it does from 540 to 620 damage to all enemies while costing eight pips now it does 620 to 680 damage to all enemies while costing seven pips so it got a pip reduction and a plus 60 damage in the high roll with a plus 80 damage in the low roll which is very good now life has a way better aoe spell and they also have red toast cards that you can also farm from lore and you can craft which arguably it is pretty hard to craft but at the very least they have something that's good for them now the second good thing was that rebirth got a healing buff before then the heal was 650 with a 400 absorb for seven pips uh by the way rebirth became the eight pip spell just to let you know and now the new rebirth does 790 healing to a 400 absorb to everyone for eight pips which is essentially like a plus 140 healing and an added pip cost by one making it a better eight pip heal than what it was originally because originally all they did was made it eight pips and keep it the same now they made it a little bit more worth it for eight pips so definitely a plus there and arguably unpopular opinion but i actually think the wings of fate change is actually pretty decent essentially wings of fate becomes a little bit more closer towards the brulee sucre where the utility is more on the heel so essentially it's a shield breaker with a really good heal now before then wings of fate used to do 525 damage plus the heal over three rounds now it has an initial hit an initial heal and essentially it's 75 damage to 375 damage for three rounds along with the healing being 75 healing to 780 healing over three rounds and the good thing about this is that it has an initial heal and damage so it becomes a good shield breaker it essentially can revive players right then and there it also has an increase in the heal which is, makes it a lot more useful utility wise because the healing is up by 330 which is amazing in my opinion i think this change is good i definitely am getting, going to get people that think that's not good but personally for me i think it's great because it becomes a lot more useful utility wise thanks to the heal but i do think that there probably needs to be another spell like this 
that does the same thing, but it's non-shadow based. So, essentially what I'm suggesting is a brulee sucre. You know, all I'm saying, KI, is, you know, make a brulee sucre. And life might be actually pretty solid. That's all I'm saying. Now, let's talk about the bad for life. Personally, this one thing that I think is bad for life is definitely not that bad in my opinion, but it definitely does go to the bad category. The bad thing is that Gnomes receives not only a damage nerf, but also the utility nerf. Before then, Gnomes used to do 780 to 880 damage and also dispels the two outgoing life spells. Now, the new Gnomes does 690 to 790 damage with a 50% life infection. So essentially the damage difference being minus 90 and the utility is a life dispel uh, basically being removed completely and changed to an infection. I don't really think the utility is that bad. I just feel like it might be better if they were to either A, give it two life infections because the way I'm seeing it is that this spell could be now used for many other schools who have useful heals probably even ice because ice recently has a heal so this could be good for more than just the life school because before then it was mainly meant for the life school you didn't really use it for damage it was just meant for the life school and my only problem with the old gnomes was generally that it made life versus life very awkward and also more of a defensive game and maybe using calipeter a little bit now and then with like luminous now and then but mostly it was a defensive game until someone either strikes or someone just does a wrong move and they use that to their advantage to dispel twice to a life wizard which i never really liked in my opinion i found the matches to be very boring to watch and also i'm pretty sure for a lot of life wizards it was very boring to do and very tedious so at the very least the utility is a little bit more universal but personally i think that they should either give it two life infections to where it prevents a life wizard and many other schools that have healing spells from healing as effectively but they can also have it to where they give you some guiding lights in order to make your heals better which could also be a good change if they change from the infection to guiding light the only ugly thing i can think about for life personally is that silence is still a healing spell and not a damage spell that's the only thing i could think of i personally think that the sign of life definitely has to be a damage spell rather than a healing spell because at the end of the day Sather's going to be better because it's cheaper. Pigsy is going to be better because it's cheaper. Many other heals are going to be better because it's cheaper. You can't really use much with the life sign because it costs too much pips. And essentially, when it comes towards PvE, I don't even think that it's that effective to use either, even if you were to do the double condition. Because most of the time, you're better off just using something cheaper like a Sather, which does way more by then. So, personally, I feel like a single hit would be better for the life scion mainly because not only will it make their solo questing easier against bosses but it can also give them an edge that they need in pvp all right so we discussed a lot about the winners and losers we went a lot in depth with all of this now let's talk a little briefly on some of the spells that i think needs changing first of all i think that medusa needs to be the new double hit it's screaming to be the new double hit you can essentially have a nerf damage maybe it's just a little slight bit and keep the stun while still keeping the double hit in order to still make it usable even after the opponent uses stun blocks because generally people only use medusa mainly for the utility it was rarely used as for damage purposes unless somehow we just happen to not have any other damage spells during the time that were better than medusa the next thing i think that needs to be changed is insane and wild bolt i feel like these two spells are a little bit way too rng for their own good because they do pretty significant amounts of damage and i'm going to be talking about one that i think might be interesting to a lot of people now this one being insane bolt instead of having it to where it's a chance to kill you or do a thousand damage to the opponent with moon uh damages basically i wanted to have it to where it initially does 500 damage but I want to make this a little bit similar to Scions because the thing I love about the Scion spells is that they're very conditional spaced and they can make you play around with these conditions. So in my personal opinion, I feel like Insane should have a condition to where it will do double the damage if 
you go a certain health percentage so i'm kind of thinking maybe like around 20 percent health some people might think it might be a little higher some people might think it'd be better if it goes a little bit lower but the idea for this spell is essentially to make it to where you mainly are going to be using insane for two things shield breaking and last resort that's the only reason why you should be using insane at the end of the day and this will essentially make insane a slight bit better but at the very least it will be used more as a last resort than it is to be used as you know just something that you use first round second round third round for the lols or just because you can't really think of any other strategy wild bolt also i think needs a little bit of a change i had a talk with some people in some whiz discord servers and they were thinking about making wild bolt just a little bit weaker you know make it do 10 damage you know keep the 10 damage essentially make it do 75 damage for the mid and then make it do 750 damage for the max it will still be pretty powerful it will still mostly be meant for shield breaking but at the very least it's still somewhat powerful just not too much to where rng can essentially destroy the opponents and for the scion of life i believe alexander lionheart had an idea for it which i really love um i'll probably link to that tweet in the description for those who are interested because it was a really neat idea to make it a damage spell but overall it needs to be a damage spell i think burning rampage needs to be tur turned back to two rounds instead of three that way fires can use burning rampage once again as a little bit more of a pressure spell because you can respond to the burning rampage but at the same time you have to respond to other hits as well I also mentioned how I think that mana burn needs to be removing four pips instead of three. That way balance becomes a little bit more of that pacing match school, which will definitely benefit them a lot. Um, there is a change to E3 that currently makes the weakness, I believe, minus 40%. And the damage is very significantly lowered. But the one thing is, is that the developer said that they didn't really calculate E3 right, so they're going to increase the damage. But personally, if you were to ask me how I would change E3, I will essentially lower the damage that it has um, in terms of what it was originally and instead of applying a minus 40 weakness, make it apply a 65 to maybe 75 weakness in my opinion, basically gladiator range. And the thing about E3 is that I mostly had a problem with the utility because it was generally considered as an easy cop out for fire wizards. And the thing about making it towards a minus 65 to a minus 75 is that the weakness will still be pretty good, but they'll still have a chance to die pretty easily. I will be a little bit more leaning towards like the 65%, maybe even have it where it's like 55 to 65. But personally, I feel like the weakness should be a little stronger. And obviously it does need a damage nerf if you're going to make the weakness that strong as well. Um, and then the other thing being that I think that Balance King Art needs to return to the minus 40% weakness because it's not really usable anymore, in my opinion. Um, I think that Storm King Art should probably have a utility of a Disarm rather than a Cleanse Charm. I think that the Death King Art could use a Weakness Utility rather than an Infection and also probably change the spell in general to where it becomes a slightly weaker Bone Dragon but with more utility. That would be kind of cool. I think that Gaze of Face should at least be doing around the range of Abominable and Hungry. Now let's talk about the Shadow Spells. Now the Shadow Spells have received quite significant nerfs. For example, the biggest one being Dark Nova used to do 1600 damage after 2 rounds. Now it does 975 damage after 2 rounds. And the difference between this is negative 625 Shadow Damage. I feel like this is too much. Personally, I'm kind of fine with some of these nerfs, like, you know, being the Dark Fiend, Dark Shepherd, maybe they can use a little bit more of a damage increase, but definitely Nova needs a damage increase for sure. I'm thinking maybe like around, make it do uh, probably around like 1200, maybe even 1100, so that it's still pretty usable. Cause essentially what happens is that if you were to do everything that Scion of sh uh, not Scion of the Shadow. <laughs> if you were to do everything that Dark Nova likes, it will do up to 1600 damage and nothing more. I feel like I should do a little bit more so it's a little bit more usable, but at the same time, I kind of see what they're coming from because they have mentioned, I believe, that they're going to be giving Shadow Pip ratings towards more gear. So we're talking about further than just like, you know, the basic gear of the hat, robe, boots, and with that 
it means that it might be able to be a little bit easier controlled. So you might want to have it to where, you know, these spells are nerfed just a slight bit, but don't make it to the point to where that they're that useless. But the other thing I also want to mention is that shallow school spells, any shallow school spells, we're talking about any creatures, anything like Shrike is also nerfed to the extent that it's not necessarily the stats that are nerfed in terms of the morphs, but it's more of the fact that it can actually kill you. So now Backlash is considered to be part of the percentage of your maximum health and not on your current health, meaning that it now has a chance to kill you if you were to use Shrike or any other spell that wasn't necessarily as intended, which I personally think that that's pretty much kind of a good change because now you can have a little bit less people trying to use Shrike for the sake of using Shrike and pressuring the opponent while still being able to play defensive. Now you have it to where you can punish players for, you know, using these shadow spells, but also you can have it to where they can't necessarily take the risk of playing so defensive since a lot of these shadow spells now have the potential to kill you. And a lot of these shallow spells are more offensive oriented than they are defensive. I believe the only one being defense is essentially Sentinel, which not many people use regardless. So that's pretty much all that I have to say about these new changes. Personally, I think that this is pretty much somewhat a step in the right direction. I feel like they can use a little bit of tweaking here and there. But overall, I really like these changes. It's opening up room for many more things to come in the future. And don't forget that the devs are also considering about nerfing mobs and bosses health to compensate for a lot of these changes because they know that they're also going to be affecting PVE with these changes. So they're trying to limit the effects on PVE as much as possible because they really love their PVE players as much as they love their PVP players. Keep that in mind. But other than that, that's going to be it for me. This has been a really long video. Like I said, there was lots to discuss. And if you liked it, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't. I got plenty more videos talking about some important things for Test Realm. And as always, remember to stay frenzy. Peace.